My name is Yitzchak Kerem. I'm an American-Israeli historian of Greek, Sephardic, and Mizrahi Eastern Jewry. In the context of Greek and primarily Balkan Jewry, I'm a historian of the Holocaust. In my second year of a BA in McAllister College in St. Paul, Minnesota, I studied in Greece at Athens. And I didn't uh, know anything about the Jews then. I visited like the synagogue and I would, I would go to the synagogue in Athens to pray every week. I visited uh, in Thessaloniki and Salonika. I saw an old Jew, I talked to the, an old Jewish rabbi. I talked to, a, I went to an old synagogue which doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but I had uh, no idea of what Greek Jewry was. In 1982, I received a grant as an Israeli to do a doctorate in Greece. And so I, without going into the details, I started a thesis on the Jews of Salonika, the end of the Ottoman Empire and the beginning of the Greek period. So that was my basic overview of, say, modern Greek Jewish history. And then it, it, it was very complicated. I didn't understand hardly what the Holocaust really was. I didn't understand what the Holocaust was in Greece. But that took me four or five years to understand. And then so when I finished my research about the Jews of Salonika, then I started researching Greek Jewry in the Holocaust. Uh, so that's ongoing. I've, done, I've been a researcher for 40 years. It's very uh, compulsive, but there's a lot to do, a lot to research, a lot to publish about, a lot to say. And for everything that's been written, there's more to say. There, there's always more documents. There's a, more to do. Unfortunately, now we, ha we don't have very many Holocaust survivors, especially concentration camp survivors. But I interviewed thousands of Greek Jews throughout the world, in Greece, in Israel, in America, in France, in more than 70 countries in 15 languages that I've learned for, primarily from academia. For researching Greek Jewry, I learned modern Greek, I activated French, I became more proficient in German, I learned Ottoman Turkish, modern Turkish, uh, I had learned Italian, I perfected Spanish. I did the MA in linguistics of Judeo Spanish, which is which is called Ladino. It's not Ladino. Okay, so all these are the languages of the regions and involving the Jews of, let's say, in this case, the Jews of the Greek Peninsula. And then I also researched what's called the, what I call the Jewish-Greek diaspora. So when Jews left Salonika, I traced them to where they went to. Let's say if they went to New York or Seattle or England. So I went to those places. I researched in archives. I interviewed people like that. So beginning in the 80s, I could meet people themselves left Salonika and went to Paris. Or sometimes I interviewed people who were second generation already. But I saw their synagogues, I saw their organizations, I saw their clubs, I saw their card clubs. Um, and those don't exist anywhere anymore. So for 40 years, I, I've had a, a view of who the Jews from Greece were. So Rhodes was really never Greek when Jews lived there. Rhodes became part of Greece only after the Holocaust. It used to be that Greeks didn't want to admit or really uh, reckon with the, the Jewish past. So very few Greeks researched uh, their, uh, Greece's Jewish history. Today there are a lot of Greeks in Greece or outside of Greece who research Greek Jewry. It's a little bit of a different perspective. It's much more ahistorical. It's much more philosophical and analytical. Uh, but it, it doesn't matter. 
Um, then there's the Judeo-Spanish language. So a lot of the cultural um, production of Judeo-Spanish occurred in Salonika and other smaller Greek Jewish communities like Rhodes, it wasn't Greek, but or Castoria, or in, in Monastir, which wasn't is in Greece at all. It wasn't Greek, it's, it's Macedonia. Today it's called Northern Macedonia. Okay? But but they're not total these topics aren't totally separate. Okay. So they they're part of the region. They're part of the the common denominator is they're part of the Ottoman experience. We're we're focusing on the Jews of Greece. But if you want to know who I am in the research, it's relevant. For the Holocaust, I also researched the Bulgarian occupation in the former Yugoslavian Macedonia, which is today, it was Firom, and now it's northern Macedonia, but the communities of Monastir, which is called Bitula today, and, the commu- and, and uh, Skopje. But so this is, this is my exposure. But so history, though, is well beyond what you find in archives, because it's what you have in an archive is incidental. It's important. It's something that's more su- substantive to base yourself on. But if we based ourselves only on archival material, we wouldn't know anything about the Holocaust. You may have a deport, an arrest order, but you won't even find out about the deportations per se. You won't find out cultural history through documents. Okay, so musicologists, for example, they record people. And so you you also can talk about history not just through uh, conditions in political history, but also what people, uh, how people lived, you know, their their music, their speech, their their customs. um, And so, so a lot. There are a lot of there's some historians that you know make analyses of coffee houses. I, I don't really do that kind of thing, but it, that's part of cultural history. So, a lot of what I've done is based on my research experiences. So I've interviewed thousands of Greek Jews. Mostly people are not living anymore. So that in itself is important. But we know about what happened in the revolt in Auschwitz or conditions in Auschwitz, or conditions in Salonika from the interviews. And then you try to get documentation to back up whatever you can. Usually you don't. 